Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'd like to discuss four tips for developing more fluid scales in today's video. And I'm gonna demonstrate a lot of these using a software called Piano Marvel. Before we get started, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, QRS. They are a company that creates very innovative piano products. And today, uh, what I'm going to demonstrate is made possible by one of their products that I recently obtained called Piano Scan, capital P-N-O Scan. It's a little laser light strip. It's touchless. It doesn't touch anything in your action. It doesn't affect the sound of your piano at all. It's just installed underneath the keyboard, and using laser lights, it measures the velocity of each of the keys, so it gives your acoustic grand piano all the capabilities that a MIDI or digital uh, piano have so that you can use it for apps like this or composing a uh, lot of really fun features. So I will leave a link in the description below for QRS's website. Again, a big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Moving on to Piano Marvel, um, this Scale Ninja Challenge runs through the end of this month um, with a free account, uh, pianomarvel.com. Everything I discuss in today's video is free of charge, so I'm not trying to incentivize you to go pay for their software. Although I, I do think it's pretty cool. A lot of my students have used um, their software to get better at sight reading with great success. They've really enjoyed it. So I, I believe in what Piano Marvel's doing, and this is a fun little uh, challenge to get better at scales. Before you write this off as some cheesy little thing, let me show you what they want you to do uh, at the pro level. They have this divided beginner, intermediate, advanced, and pro. They want you at the pro level to be at 192, four notes per click. Okay, I don't care who you are, that's fast. Okay, so um, let's get on to tip number one uh, with the beginner. Okay, and I'm gonna bring up a screen recording here. Just double check, make sure this is recording. All right, so let's do uh, A major, okay? So down in the left-hand corner, they have 80 BPM, so 80 on your metronome. We will select this. They actually chose not to have the metronome clicking during this, and I thought, hmm, that's an interesting choice. Why would they not do that? But it's, it's an interesting choice because I've actually had a couple students recently that as soon as I turn their metronome off, <laughs> they can play faster. I think the metronome sometimes gets in our heads and messes with us a little bit. So uh, you can use your metronome to check things, and I absolutely encourage some metronome pra practice with scales. But they are grading this not based on a metronome click. They're basing, basing it based off of a time. So you can get a, an approximate tempo, two notes per click. 80, one octave up and down for the beginner level, okay? So I like to always have my metronome out just to gauge about what speed it's going to take me to earn my ninja card. They, they have white belt, you know, green belt, blue belt, black belt, all those different things to kind of grade you along the way, and you can keep working on a scale until you get your ninja card. In other words, uh, just pass off at that level the scale. It's kind of fun. It makes it, it's kind of like a video game. So it's better than your teacher saying, go home and do it 15 times with metronome and you want to bash your head into the wall. So this makes it a little more enjoyable. <laughs> they have this set up, uh, as you can see on your screen, to assess you for the right hand, the left hand, and then both hands. To save time today, I'm just going to go to both hands. And let me demonstrate this. Um, as soon as I'm ready, I just press the little practice button down on the bottom center. And that's a ninja level because uh, they wanted you under six seconds at this beginner level. Okay, let's actually um, do it much slower to show you. And let me make a mistake. Okay, so that uh, I had three missed notes in there and it took me nine seconds. So that gave me a score of 76%. Uh, once you have your ninja card, they they keep you up at the top as as ninja level. Um, but if you only get to like a green belt on one, you can keep striving for that higher level. Kind of fun. The first tip for developing more fluid scales at a beginner level is to start using your entire body to play the piano. Very important to get this concept down. A very easy way of doing this is to 
practice lifting the entire arm, wrist, hand, everything together. Very slowly like this. And what you're doing is you're feeling the whole mechanism taking the key. It's not just isolating the fingers and just smacking it like that. Okay, you can lift the finger, of course, when you play the piano, but we want to get all the weight originated from the entire mechanism. Once that starts to feel more comfortable, minimize that motion down. Pretty soon, nobody but you as the player will know that you're playing with your entire mechanism because it's just such tiny motions but you feel the entire weight source being used. Let's move on to tip number two with the intermediate level. Okay, so in this level, let's go to, let's do a harmonic minor scale actually. So um, we'll go down here, let's try E minor harmonic. Okay, they are having you do the same tempo, but now you're doing two octaves up and down at the intermediate level. Still not too intimidating to get to 80, but it does take a little bit of work, okay? The second tip that I wanted to go over is something that I've discussed, I believe, in a previous video. It's called add-on. Basically, any time that you're struggling with a scale or passage of music, playing add-on, adding small bits of material to what you already have, and then moving on and practicing different sections like that, not making it convenient for yourself, is a really big unlock for playing tough material more fluidly. So, for instance, I can practice right hand, left hand. Let's just assume that I have it hands together at this point, okay? So here's my E harmonic minor scale. Let's say that I'm really struggling at the end, that I just make a lot of mistakes at the end. Playing add-on from the end is one of my favorite things to do. So I would go through and I'd write in every single uh, finger number if you need to in like a Hannon book. Here they have all your fingers written in for the most part, so it's easy to tell where you need to start. But I would just start with the last three notes. Making sure that feels really good. Add one more note. One more note. Okay, so that would be two, one, three, two, one. Maybe add two, sorry. <laughs> add two more notes maybe, so. Just like that, and then. And let's say that starts to feel fluid, the, the place that you are having trouble, but when you put it all together, it's still struggling. Well, maybe you start, maybe you have E's, because those are easy to remember the fingerings, as little checkpoints along the way. So you could practice just that little piece. And then let's add, and then let's do all of them together. All right, and then the whole scale. You can add note by note if you need to, or you can add uh, bigger chunks along the way. So it's totally up to you. Let's do the assessment on this one. Okay, so we'll do both hands. 80. Da, 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 da. That's about my tempo. Okay, I can turn the metronome off. I just like to have kind of a uh, an approximate tempo that I'm shooting for. Here we go. Let's see what I got. Okay, so that was eight seconds and they wanted 12 seconds as the target time. So that's plenty fast. You know what, just for kicks, let's go to um, F sharp minor harmonic and let's play it much slower, okay? So we'll go to both hands just to save time. So that gave me a blue belt, okay? So I would then need to practice it for a while, and then once I felt better, don't even have to get it this fast. Just using it to save some time. Okay, that was 99% because I had a, a missed note, so it only gave me a black belt there, so let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Now I had the, the ninja score because I didn't miss notes. I guess it said I missed one. Maybe that was a, a little flub somewhere. 
All right, moving on to the advanced level in the Scale Ninja software, I'd like to share tip number three. Tip number three is thinking of how every scale is comprised simply of one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Seems like silly advice, but let's go to another harmonic minor scale. Um, let's do F sharp minor harmonic. That gives some students some trouble. Starting off with three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, ending with a three up top. It, give, it throws a lot of students for a loop. And you, I know some books start with two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It's a little confusing because all the other G sharps have four on them. So I would suggest actually doing three, four to start with. Starting with that cross, three, four, one throws a lot of students. So what I would suggest is practicing your scales in the most comfortable and comfortable manner possible. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then just slowly erasing that cross. You can do the same thing in the left hand. So that one actually starts conveniently, four, three, two, one, and then three, two, one. Okay. And then putting these together, uh, in chunks as well. So you could cater to the right hand. You could go, and then you could do. Those are the right hand positions. You could cater to the left hand comfortable positions where it's four, three, two, one, or three, two, one. So you could go. It's just a creative way to help you get more comfortable with the intuitive positions. Cause a lot of times it's those crosses. And I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. Um, about better ways to cross, shifting versus crossing, uh, fluidity with scales that you can check out for further tips. But a lot of times catering to those intuitive positions really helps students to develop more fluid scales. So let's give this a try. They want you at 160, two notes per click. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, about right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna press both hands to save time. So uh, again, the target time was 60 seconds. I did 5.39 seconds. So as you can see, that uh, gives you the ninja card. Okay, moving on to the pro level, okay? I want to talk about how speed is not everything here, even though that's what we're shooting for. I want you to always keep the quality really good. If you're shooting for 192, four notes per click, unless you're you know, a seasoned professional. And even even as a professional pianist, I find some scales very difficult at 192, four notes per click. A lot of the piano repertoire doesn't demand scales that are that fast. There are certain instances like Chopin Sonata. That are gonna use extremely fast scales. However, um, or this Lister Rhapsody. been so long since I played it. That's actually faster than 192 when you're in full speed. So I want to instill in you that quality is more important than speed. Okay. So don't try, don't mess up your scale technique trying to get faster, but continuously push forward. Let's jump into the pro level. Okay. And let's just take, we'll just take a major scale this time. Let's take G major. Okay. And I want to just work up um, it doesn't have you practice hands alone to hands together in this one. Um, but let's let's just take a look. We'll do the practice, okay? And let's just take it four notes per click at 160. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So. Okay. Um, as you can see, the red notes uh, were places where I may not have been perfectly lined up. I didn't miss notes in there, but it might've been like, okay, so let's see if we can get it around that speed a little bit cleaner, less red notes. Okay, let's see that time. One red note, okay, so, and that was a brown belt. They do dock you if you're not lined up. So that's why I like this software too. If you're totally screwing up, let me show you a real big screw up. won't let you move on. Okay. So I'm just going to stop that one. All right. As we approach faster and faster, it gets, it gets difficult. I'm not going to lie. So okay, let's try this. Here we go. Nice and loose. 
Oh, see, I might have gotten off just a little. Let's let's restart that. Okay. So that gave me a black belt. Okay, I'm not I'm not satisfied with that. You guys are gonna watch me struggle here. Oh, black belt again. Again. Here we go. Mess that up. This is good. So you guys can see how difficult this pro level really is. Okay. Oh, there we go. Finally. No red notes. 4.58 seconds. Okay. So it might take you several attempts to get that. Or you might be laughing at me if you're one of my colleagues. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what I want to focus on at this level, the fourth and final tip is a really valuable piece of advice given to me by Sergey Babayan. I think I've discussed it before on this channel. I like to call it the shadowing technique. He didn't have a particular name for it, but what it does is it helps you get lighter. One of the truths that you need to embrace is that the faster you go, most likely the lighter you're going to need to be. We all have limits. Even Richter had a limit. Uh, his limits are way above mine, obviously, with speed. But even he had a limit with speed. It seems like he didn't because of, like, watch the Opus 10 number 4 Chopin Etude video. It's, it's ridiculous. But having said that, everyone has a limit. And when you are pushing towards your limit or trying to break through that limit, you most likely are going to need to get a little lighter in your touch. You can't play fortissimo and expect to set your highest speed. So one thing that uh, Sergei Babayan had me do is on this. Passage, when it really. That's of this etude that I was just referencing by Richter. I actually learned this in that very etude. He had me just touch the keys. So just touch the keys and then add a tiny bit more sound. A lot of ghost notes in there. Okay, and then a little more sound. You have to be careful to not get too surfacey in your playing with this. That is one of the dangers of this, but it will help you play lighter than you ever have before. You can apply that to these scales. So I can shadow this and maybe only do it for an octave or two because shadowing the entire scale, might you might get off in your alignment and start creating bad habits that way, but just maybe two octaves. And so forth. That is a very helpful tip that has really helped me play a lot lighter. I remember practicing that method recently on my Chopin Concerto number one at the end where it's really flying with orchestra. You can watch a, a recording of that on YouTube if you'd like. But that tip really helps to identify when you're over pressing on the keys and helps you get into a, a lighter way of playing the piano. I hope today's uh, tips have helped you, these four different tips for playing scales more fluidly. I hope that the introduction to this software really helps you in your studies. I wanted to talk just a, quickly about a few little prizes that Piano Marvel has going on. So there's four chances to win a $100 Amazon gift card, okay? So those four chances are um, a random drawing, anyone who gets a single ninja card. So as you could see, even if you're just doing the beginner level, anybody can do that, okay? Um, they're going to have a studio with the uh, top place of the ninja card, so whoever has the most ninja card. The studio is anyone who signs up um, even just with a free account on Piano Marvel and lists me as their teacher. I think I just checked the other day. I, I don't follow along with all of my students. These are just people who have signed up through my videos or whatever. Um, we already are, I think, in sixth place. If we win that studio prize, I'm not keeping that gift card. I'll do a random drawing and give it to one of you guys if you'd like to uh, just list me as your teacher under that. I think that we could probably win if you guys uh, get on board with this. Um, so a chance to win 100 bucks there. There will be a random studio drawing. And then finally, there will be... Um, 
a $100 card for the person with the most ninja cards. So that's gonna be a really hard one to get. But these are all fun ways to incentivize you to practice skills, to give a fun little spin on them, and to gauge your progress along the way. Um, you don't need the piano scan unit to do this. You can do this on any piano that uh, tracks digitally um, the MIDI capabilities. So if any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Thanks to Piano Marvel for creating a fun little challenge that I wanted to share with my audience. Thanks again to QRS for sponsoring this video. And thank you to all of you for your continued support of the channel. I try to bring you the best content I can. Um, I try to introduce you to challenges like this that I think will be kind of fun and maybe spice up your practice sessions a little bit, at least on the technical side with, with videos like this. I'll leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 additional tips. None of these tips I shared today were necessarily in that webinar, um, but those are 10 tips I use every day in my teaching and practice. Uh, if you'd like to check those out, a couple of my paid courses, if you'd like to go even deeper than this channel goes over, and finally a link for my gear kit, which has all the uh, gear that you see me using in these videos, all the stuff I use to make podcasts, um, my online course stuff, how I film those. So there's a whole list of those along with some music theory books and other things as well. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions. Mm -hmm.